Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of Crazy Dad's Garage. I've decided that this project right here that I'm working on pretty much uh, defines why this is Crazy Dad's Garage, right? Because this is a pretty crazy project. Uh, we're going to work on a, the next step on it here today. So I will flip the camera around and we'll go to explaining what's going on. Okay, here's where it starts getting even more crazy than it's been all the way along here. So, we started out by adapting the back half of some random sedan body to the front half, front cowl part of some other body. And we've got that accomplished. Now, hey, we got to have a windshield frame, right? And so, I could do something all real simple there. Or, I had this piece laying around from... Uh, my parts truck on the other project that I'm working on here. And so I cut that windshield frame off of there. And today's project is going to be to chop that frame and narrow it this way and get it attached to the top of our cowl here so that it will uh, do us duty as a V style windshield frame on it. Something a little different. Um, yeah, different's not always good, but. Uh, in this case, different is free. And uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool, actually, once we get it done. So I'm going to get some things ready to go here. And I will explain to you where I'm at a little piece at a time on the project. Okay, here we got a roughed in place just to start with. So I've got it set up there and held in place. It is, oh, and by the way, this frame is off of a 1950 Chevy pickup cab. And so, just so you have a reference point there, not that it's hyper important, but uh, here's what I've done. So, I cut back here into the dash part of the frame, and uh, I'm kind of using that as a reference point for my distance here on where to set it. Got a center mark. On the frame, a center mark on my cowl base on this hole, which seems to be correct. Um, I've got the thing sitting at an angle right now, which... Uh, so I'm sitting down tight there, and this at the back edge is basically sitting down tight on my cowl here. So that has me kind of at the angle that we're going to end up at. Um... Then I wanted to do some things. I've got to determine how much I've got to narrow it and how much I'm going to chop it. And so what I've done here, let's get you here. We're going to do this where you don't have too much backlight. So let's see if it's better over here. Yeah. All right. So I have this curvature coming down right here. And at this point right here before it V's out that way, I'm going to call that my outside edge. And I think what I'm going to shoot for is to have that line up with the outside of this old windshield frame mounting hole. Because I have three holes on both sides for mounting that old windshield frame. So I'm going to use that as my reference point. And if I then take a measurement from here to that hole, that gives me eight and a half inches on both sides. And though that's the amount I'm going to need to narrow this thing down. I get that done. Then I was trying to figure out. So what I did here on these posts, I've got a mark here where if you come down here, this is both of these sides are parallel from this mark down to this mark. And I went around here and double checked on this side too. And they're also parallel going up this way. So that's my easiest place to chop the top or chop this frame. And that gives me a potential of nine inches I can take out of there. But if I chop it down to nine inches, I'm going to have this little bit and this little bit. It's all the windshield I'm going to have, and that's not enough. So I just took my tape measure and roughed out there. To say, okay, how much do I want for a windshield in here? Right now, it's actually 15 inches up there. As I got to look at it, I'm thinking, you know what? 10 inches would be about right for what I want to do here. So that's the number that I'm going to go with. 
for the finished height of my windshield. That means that we're going to end up taking five inches out of each of the pillars and out of the center uh, piece there. So I'll be able to do that. Now, anytime I'm doing that too, I'm going to be looking here and say, okay, what kind of damage do I have in this pillar? And there's actually quite a bit of it here, to be honest with you. It starts from a dent right here, and this is flattened out all the way up into this area right there. But I especially have this bullet hole here, and I'm going to do away with that. So I'm going to make sure that I cut that part out. Uh, so we'll do that. My windshield wiper holes were pretty buggered up here in a couple of spots. Um, on this other side, I've got a bullet hole right here that I thought, well, I want to get rid of that. So my first thought was, well, let's get rid of the, the wiper hole and the bullet hole on both sides and uh, take our eight and a half inches out there. Then I got to looking at it and I went, look at this. This curvature right here seems to be the same all the way across here until you look at it more closely. And what you realize is that as it comes back this way, it tends to taper down more. And, and I think it flattens out a little bit. So what the best place then to take my width out is going to be in this area right here, right next to the center. So that's where I'm going to take my eight and a half inches of width out of um, on the bottom. Now, I haven't figured anything out on the top except I do know how much I have to have out of there so I will get this thing down on the bench then and start figuring out exactly where those cuts need to be made and then I'll probably get it tacked together I'm gonna do a, another thing here before you start something like this you need to get your basic shape as close to the original as you can so I'm gonna flatten this bar out because that bar is supposed to be straight all the way up and down so I'm going to do that so that when I do cut it, um, it will work out correctly. So that's going to be my starting point. I am going to take, I'm going to lose the drip rails off of here. Uh, this one's almost off. Just got another one or two spot welds, but I'll get rid of it. Yeah, I'll cut the other one off. I got to look on the inside here and decide what I'm going to do because I'm probably going to keep that entire header panel that you can see right there. This part right here from here down to here uh, just because of the strength. Now something I might do is cut this lip off of it up here, but I haven't progressed that far yet. Um, one of the things I do know is this skin up across the top there is the worst condition of any of the pieces on the thing so i don't know if i'm going to try to straighten it or replace it or completely change that up or what i'm going to do but i do want i do want a framework across the top i don't want an open topped windshield on this deal and so that's kind of some other parameters that i've got to work within here and so that's where we're going to be moving to you can see here, so actually this thing matches the curvature of this cowl fairly well. And that's why it's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, here you can see where I cut it. I've got this piece sticking down, so that's definitely going to come off. Um, but I also want to come inside of here and here and come up and weld me a stiffener that goes from up in here and that can tie into my green framework down below to help uh, keep this thing from flopping back and forth because there's going to be a lot of pressure on it when you're driving down the road and the wind's hitting it and over time you fatigue the metal and you end up cracking it along your welds there. I don't want to do that so we're going to try to um, add some stiffening into it too. So anyway those are some of the things that I got to be thinking about here and it's going to help me determine the direction I'm going to go. So I'm going to get that thing down on my workbench and start uh, measuring, marking, and probably cutting it. I think the next time that you see it here, I'm going to have it cut into uh, four pieces and then be start be trying to put those back together. So there you go. We will be back at that point.
Alrighty, here we've got our cuts in the outer skin made. Um, so I got my five inch cuts here on the sides. I haven't cut this because I'm going to do that when I do the inner part of it. These are my eight and a half inch cuts um, there. You notice they're lined up differently up there. That's because I was trying to get them into the places where I'd have the most good metal left um, on my skin. So I've got them there. Um, I had to cut them loose so this flange piece is not cut out yet. And uh, I have to get those, they're spot welded along in here, so I'll have to get those spot welds cut. But anyway, that shows me a few things. Um, such as, one of the things that I'm trying to do, I don't know if this is critical and everybody may not want to do this, but uh, I want to cut my outer skin and my inner skin, preferably in a different spot. So I've got some staggering of my welds and things there. And this one uh, is an interesting example here. Let's see, I'm coming back here. Where's that? Oh, well, I thought that there would be a joint in this piece somewhere back over here, but there's not. But... What I'm going to do is, rather than cut this, I'm going to take it loose at the spot welds from the other one. And then when I make my cut in the second one, I will make it so that it overlaps it a similar amount. And we can tie that into here, and that will give me extra strength in that joint, rather than just welding the two outer skins together. Because when you have this inner structure, it's there to add more strength to it. Um, down here, there's not going to be any extra structure, and so what I'm going to do is, uh, so I made this cut here, I'm going to come over here and take my eight and a half inches out of here. For one thing, that'll remove this uh, defroster vent hole, and then, uh, so when I slide this section up to here, I'll still be tying into this piece, which is still solid back in. All of there. Now I did make a boo boo here, thinking I was cutting along here, but I was cutting the wrong place. But that's fixable. Uh, but again, we'll stagger our cut back here, and uh, that'll allow us to bring those two things together. So the only one I really haven't thought through, which is actually your most critical one. I wanted to get this off and see what that inner structure was composed of. And there's actually two layers of it here. You can see right there. And I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do here. But I am going to stagger them from the cut on my skin somehow, some way. i got to figure that out. Um, I've got a joint up here, a factory joint. But I don't think that's going to work out real well. I don't know. It might. Anyway, I'm going to have to do some calculating now from the back side to be able to figure that out. So, that's where I'm at. Um, this will allow me to lay out my uh, back side now to get the cuts ready, lined up, and done on that. So, I'm going to move in that direction, and I will show you what I've done when I get there. Alrighty then, this is how you make big parts into little parts. <laughs> yeah, so I got everything cut up the way that I wanted to. Now we get to start piecing it back together. And uh, I'm going to just do that. I'm going to start putting it together with vice grips, kind of holding everything together that way. And I'll come back and show you what I've learned here. Well, I'll tell you one thing that I had to do. Um, on the uprights so this is the passenger side uh, cowl going up the upright here there was these were too complicated here to do what I wanted to uh, so what I'm gonna do is come up with a different method here maybe I'll I'll put something inside of here and sleeve it kind of like I've done with a lot of the other things that I do and that'll give me some extra strength in there. So anyway, that's the one major difference that I've had here in this process. So let me get them kind of put together and we'll be back.
there we go after a very rough fashion that's what it's going to look like now obviously i'm going to thin the top down quite a bit so it doesn't look like it's got a massive forehead there but uh, that should get me a usable windshield i think so i'm not even going to try to put that up on the car right now because it just isn't going to be controllable it'll flop all over the place but anyway got it fit together and really i only noticed one place second place where i screwed up i've got about a half inch short cut there so i'm gonna have to put a filler in that in this place that i ended up cutting it loose right here are really the only mistakes that i've got in there but they're fixable that's why i have a welder right but I think that's going to go together and work out okay. So, there we go. That's what I'm going to start with. Uh, I'm going to start getting that tack together. I'll have to keep fitting it as we go because I'm sure it's not going to be a perfect fit all the way around. But we'll start messing with it, get everything together, and see how it uh, wants to fit on the car small parts getting ready to go back into one big part so i've got them up here on the workbench what i've done now is i've got all of my edges that i'm going to have to weld prepped any place i've got a contact point i got myself cleaned up to bare metal um, that's uh, allowed me to cut a few notches here that i'll weld to those spots there um, right here it's also given me the chance to do a bunch of repairs on these things so, um, the, for instance, right here, get that to sit still, these welds had all come loose and there was some damage in here that, uh, you know, bending and some dents and stuff. So I was able to get that all straightened back out, uh, a few dents that were there, um, not a lot to worry about here, actually I still do have a big dent there. I don't know if I can get that where I can fix it or not. I might. But th this one was where I had those huge mangled bullet holes in here. And I've been able to, with the anvil and my ball peen hammer, get that pretty well flattened back out and get this stretching out of it and everything. So I'll come in here after I'm done, whatever I'm going to save, and I'll weld that back up in there. But uh, I've got, and yeah, we had a pretty screwed up dent here coming out this way so i got that taken care of yeah i don't know what else here those are kind of the main things but yeah got myself a bevel on this edge when i get ready to do this edge i'll bevel it so that those because that's a much thicker piece of metal and then so we're ready to clamp it back together here and what's cool about having done these overlaps where my cuts go is that I can use this edge here to line this edge up so that my match right there is correct. I get all my, where am I at? Sorry, this edge, did I show you that? So I can get all of my positioning correct along there before I weld down here and tack that back together. So that's going to work out really slick with the way we've got this done. It's going to keep all of our alignment correct you know, this way and this way and all of those things. So I'm going to make this job much simpler to get back together in the proper relationship to each other. So my next step is then I'm going to get it all clamped back together. I'll get, so I don't, I haven't prepped the top pieces yet, but I'm going to get it all clamped back together and get the bottom three pieces tacked to get probably welded clear up actually. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just tack them up until I get the rest of it in place. Yeah, I'll probably do that. But I get them all tacked in place, tied together good, and then I will take the top parts off and uh, do the same kind of prep work to them. So that's where we're going to get to. Maybe I'll show you a quick one when I get it uh, actually ready to tack back together here. We are uh, vice gripped back together. Um, this uh, has got my two top edges of those pieces tied together which made my seam come out just right right here which 
I like that. I'm not worried about these yet because I'm going to get my tacks in around here and across the across the top here first. Uh, this one, because I have this piece that I accidentally cut loose, I'm taking a different approach. So I've got it tied in here. And that pair of vice grips has me lined up. So I'm flush across right at that point. And uh, so I get that tacked in and then I'll start fitting the others together. But this will let me tack over to here, I think, which is where I've got the thing cut apart. So I'll get that tacked in, get myself tacked back here. And that will then allow me to locate this thing so I can come and tack and weld that along there. So I'm going to get to that point. Once I get those done, then I'll come in here and start matching these up and pulling this joint. To, I'm not going to try to close this joint this way, but I'm going to level it out as I come across there because there's a slightly different roll here because of the eight and a half inches that we took out. So I'll do that. That will. I think these are all going to line up really nice. And I decided not to try to tack it back together with the whole thing yet. I'm going to do it this way because I have all these things to hold it in the correct relation to each other. And uh, that will allow me to get things tacked. And then I think I'll be ready to start cleaning up my other mating surfaces to be able to tack the top together with it. So that's my game plan. I'll show you when I get the tack welds done. Okay, there we are about an hour later. I've um, got uh, everything tacked together here and got a filler put in there to fill that gap that I accidentally cut wrong. All those are tied together good. And then let's flip it around here. Make sure I don't grab something hot while I do this. <laughs> there we go front edge of it so our little repairs done in here we're tacked together along that bead good got these to come down and lined up perfectly as we tie it in there and change those curvatures just a little bit that's almost filled in looks like i got a couple spots i forgot there tacked across there so that piece is all ready to go and uh now I'm going to start the process of fitting the the top part into it. So I'm going to go in here and clean these edges up. Um, one of the things I'm going to do here to try to regain some strength is places where I've got double layers of metal like this. I'm going to grind and bevel through that outer layer so that I can actually get to the inner layer to weld it up too. So I'll do that there. I'll do that back here um, on both sides. And that will allow me to get a little more strength in there. And, yeah. I had contemplated running myself a bar down here so I could weld it in here before I actually seal this up. So that it sticks out the bottom so I run it through the cowl and have something then down sticking down below to tie into my framework down in the body. And I may try to get that figured out because I want something to stiffen it up. So if I weld it up here, I weld it where it comes out the bottom, that should be able to tie that together and stiffen it up real well. And I'm looking down here, it might be best to stick it right in this corner here. I think I could go all the way down with a straight shot, either there or here to tie that together and get run down there. But if I could stick that, you know, maybe six inches down through the cowl, then that'll give me something to tie to when I get underneath there and tie into my framework. Let me show you back over here what I'm thinking. But that will allow me to get tied into that framework over there, which will stiffen it up to resist the wind pressure on it when you're driving down the road. I want to do that rather than just having it tied into the sheet metal up here because I think this will eventually fatigue enough. We'll end up cracking along there if I don't stabilize it. So that's one of my plans. If I do that correctly, that would all end up behind the dash where you won't see it, which is really what I'm after. So 
there you go. That's my game plan. I will get moving forward on cleaning up this metal. I think at this stage, I'm going to clean up not just here and here, but yeah, also all three of these parts up here so that I am ready to go. I may end up, depends on how this all fits up. I think I'll try fitting it, but I may need to tighten these gaps up a little bit here, just depending on how it fits from side to side. But we'll go from there and uh, let you know when we're ready to start tacking that back together. Alrighty, we're welded up on the bottom here. I've got this all cleaned up and mocked in place here. Um, I started out with this side. Well, I actually started on the center. What I found out when I centered this bar right here, I was too far that way with the top and too far that way with the top. So it means my top was too wide. And not only that, but the measurement from here down to here was a half inch longer on this side over here. So that means I've got to take roughly a half inch out of this cut right here to make it line up. And uh, you see down here, my cuts at an angle there. So I'm gonna clean this up first. Try to get that looking better. And I think I'll start kind of gently piecing it together from this side. I'll narrow it down what I need here to make this line back up. Then I'll narrow this down, cut that down to get myself back in the alignment that I need. So that's where I'm at right now. And we'll be back when I start uh, cleaning some of that up here. Okay, here we are after we got quite a bit of it tacked together. I found that what my alignment problems were was the thing was actually twisted from side to side. And uh, by getting that, well, I guess basically what I started with is I got this point right here to line up and got it tacked in place. And then as I've worked my way over, I got to where I could get that in place. And then what I had is this bar right here was like three quarters of an inch out of being perfectly in line. But when I took the sides of it, pulled out on this side, pushed in on that side on the top, that tweaking brought that bar over into alignment. And uh, so I brought it over, tacked it together. And then I went back here and had got this point and that point in the right relationship to each other. And by the way, this long flat pair of vice grips here has been really handy because I can clamp this window uh, edge here with those and it holds it straight so it's in alignment all the way around. And uh, that's, so that's been a real handy tool. But uh, so I've got those tacked up. I went in back on the back side here. Now I've got a, that welded solid because that bead worked out good on both sides. Here's the other side of it. And uh, let's see if I can flip it over here. So there you can see I've got that done. I got that welded up. My alignment's not as good on this side, so I want to get this to align a little better there. I uh, got myself welded both sides there. Then I've come up here and started putting this together. And this required some pressure because this side over here was pulled up this way a little bit. So I've Pushed that down with a screwdriver and clamped it and then have welded it together so it's ready. i got to come back and do a similar thing over here to get the alignment right on this joint. So I'm going to get that tacked in place and get a bunch more tacking done. And then I think probably by just twisting the thing some more, I can get it to, to where my alignment's actually pretty good on it. it uh, Sorry, I'm getting you sick with the camera angle here, but uh, that's what happens when you're one-handed. So here you can see what I'm using as an alignment is, well, maybe you can't see it very good. I'm lining the 
uh, the A pillar up here with the A pillar on the other side, and they are almost perfectly parallel. And that's what I'm after. Um, that will mean that I don't have it twisted around in the wrong direction. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to work on, you know, getting these a little more aligned and, and welded into place. Um, that side over there is going to take quite a bit more work because it had some dents in the A pillar there. I'm going to see what I can do to get that aligned and, uh, you know, go back and get these welds finished up here. I'm not going to weld this clear up here because I'm going to cut it off down in here somewhere. So I just want to get this to where I can get to that point. So anyway, I'm going to get that other welding done up, like I was saying, and then I'll come back and show you where I'm at at that point. Okay, we're making some good progress here. I've had to, these things were not perfectly lined up, and that's to be expected because, remember, there's eight and a half inches out of it here. That profile has changed just a little bit as it's gone down through there, but we're able to start by pulling this thing all the way up tight and then putting these tack welds along the, the pinch weld there. And then same thing over here, and then I was able to, you know, by raising one side or the other, this up and down, get these two lines parallel on both of those. So I've got those all tacked in. We're in the process of finish welding it right now. Uh, the other thing I've been working on is this corner. Now, this cut was in a different place in relation to the base of the post than that cut. And this one happens to line up really good on the inside. This one did not. So I made myself a relief cut back up into here, which allowed me to take that and pinch it together until I was aligned and then weld that. And then I was out just a little bit here. So I've got to sell myself another relief cut there, which allowed me again to pinch those together until I could get them welded. So those are all ready to be final welded now. That'll have that corner all where it needs to be. Um, this one... I'm going to have to, I can see how I'm going to need to make myself a cut right here to pull this over tighter. And uh, actually on this cut, I may want to make that cut come quite back up, quite a ways back up here in order to taper in there better. But uh, we'll see as we get down to that point. Right now, I'm going to finish these welds up up here on the top edge of it and get that weld finished up and then we'll go back over and work on that corner over there so it's coming along okay she's all welded up now let's take a look down here see if we can sight down across there we go yeah those are almost perfectly parallel right there so that's exactly what i'm after um, got my edges all tucked in here to where they match the curvature everywhere that's the important thing. Get this one to working out good. Right there, down here. And I can't get around all things. Got that centered up there. My top uh, welds are finished off. And then got around back. Kind of see them there. There we go. Got those welds finished off. Now we're all set to do our grinding. Uh, but I'm not going to do that yet. Probably my next thing now is going to be to figure out the curvature here and get this thing cut to fit my cowl. Um, well, as I say the next thing, one of the things I'm going to do real quick here is cut a bunch of this excess metal off the top because it's, it's bugging me because it looks extra bulky up there and the thing's really not going to be that bulky when I get done with it. So I want to get that out of the way visually so I can get the picture working better in my head and then we'll go over there and start fitting it to the cowl and I think it's the way that I've got it done here I'm actually going to be able to lean it back more than I had originally thought I was going to be able to so anyway we will just get her uh, trimmed up a little bit and go over there and start the process of fitting it to the cowl all right so we got her in place there I'm actually surprised at how well it fits along the cowl. Um, 
Yeah, it is a little more upright than I want. I want to get it leaning back a little bit more if I can. And I think I can do that. So you can see we trimmed the top edge off and that took a lot of the bulk away. Now that obviously I'll trim some more there before I'm finally finished. But I want to get the thing sitting where I finally decide to do it before I do that final trimming. And, you know, the thing looks really good along here. I think if I come in here and cut what's left of this little lip off, right along over into this area that's going to let that sit down tighter there and then I'll have to give myself a line here and cut back up into there just a little bit to get that to sit down but I do that on both sides and it's going to sit pretty good um looking at this right now um probably I can go in here and cut a little more height off of this and then a little more of an angle down this way and I think that'll let me tip it back so I think that's going to be my next attempt here that uh, piece that's hanging over the dashboard there um, I'm probably going to trim it to fit right down in this groove when I'm done and then I'll piece in these extra pieces along here until I get out there. But uh, that's kind of got to wait to uh, see how I get it tipped back. But I think that's where I'm going to go next is uh, try to get a little more taken off here so I can lean it back just a little bit more and see if I can make that work out. I think on this next cut too, I'll cut a little bit of this off of here so that I get rid of some of that height. Might even do this too. Although, I don't know, maybe not. Oh, I don't want to do that till I get it leaned back where I want it to be. Anyway, I'm actually quite happy with the way this is turning out. If I can get it to lean back where I want to, I think it's going to work out really good. So there we go. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, got it to lean back somewhat more. Um, it's not super noticeable, but it doesn't feel so straight up and down now. And so I'm going to go ahead and start fitting it to the cowl at this point, which will involve, you know, making my cuts along here to drop that down just a little bit. And here, um, I'll just have to see what I can do in here. I may decide to... Uh, Cut it a little more, but I don't know, that, that cut right along there is actually pretty dang good. So, I'll do that and get it, uh, you know, I'll we'll have to grind off uh, a little bit of rust there to get it ready to weld in place. And those sort of things. So, that's kind of going to be where I'm going to work at next. At some point, I still don't have my rod inside that I wanted to so I could come weld it to my framework. Um, so I will probably need to figure that out some way or another. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I think I'll be able to tell better at this point now. So that's going to be my direction of movement next. Yeah. All right. That's where I'm headed. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, time for another piece of video here. So I've spent a lot of time on this now, cleaning up my welds. Uh, not 100% everywhere, but most everywhere. So it's looking much better than it was. Um, got that done. I have it fitted now to where it matches my curvature. I've gone through here and ground off uh, where we're going to be welding it to the cowl. So along there and along here, got those pieces done. Um, I built some extensions right here to go up into the window frame, windshield frame to help give it more strength. I tied them to inside there to the main structural member going up the A pillar. And uh, I have them bent now so where they are parallel from this side over to that side. And got my holes cut 
for them to drop through. So now I'm ready to get my basically my final fitting up here to be able to drop the thing in and put it together. So I'm going to set it up in place and uh, mock it up and show you as I'm ready to tack it in. All right, so she set right down in there. The more I do to it, the better it fits. So I'm loving that. Um, got a pretty good fit all the way along the cowl there until we get right out to the edges, which I pretty much expected. So I'm going to build some fillers here. But um, got a corner right there where I want it on both sides. I had a little bit of a dent down in the dash here when I knocked that up that even aligned that uh, filler plate in there really good so there and uh, for just randomly attaching those braces to a structural member inside of here I've come out to where I'm less than a quarter of an inch away uh, on both sides over there so that will work out really well for me being able to brace that up and weld it so I like where I'm at. Uh, my next thing here is going to be to tack it in place. And that's what I'm going to be doing here from this point. So I will get that done and probably get most of it welded to the cowl and everything. Come back and show you how that's working out. So there we go. I like it. That's going to sit in there really good. All right, here we go. All right, it's on there and independently holding itself up. So you see we've got it tacked all the way across the top of the cowl there. I just took my big vice grips and, and came around here and clamped it as we went along. And it, uh, it pulled the imperfections out of the cowl by attaching it to this stiffer piece up here. And we've got it welded right here on both sides. So what I don't have done yet is tacking this edge here, but I want to come in with my grinder and, and trim that up just a little bit so that it'll all sit uniformly down in that groove right there, um, at least over to this point. And uh, that'll let it uh, sit in there and be stronger. Uh, this piece is going to stiffen up this piece, and together they'll stiffen each other up, so that'll be a really good thing. And then I'll just have to to get over here this one i can probably tap it down in there and get it to where i can weld it where it'll work that one i'm gonna have to make fabricate some new pieces to fill in over there but uh we got her there she's on she's gonna be nice and sturdy once well it is right now but it'll be way more so when i get it all welded together get that the braces welded to the framework and uh yeah, it's going to be a little bit uh, different, interesting sort of a thing, but hey, so far, all I've spent on it's time and some welding material and grinder blades. So, anyway, you like it or hate it, either one, it's up to you, but I'm having fun doing it, and uh, at some point, we'll get the thing uh, on the road, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? So, I'm going to finish welding it up uh, and come back, and we'll talk at that point. Okay, so I trimmed up a little bit along the top of the dash there and got that tack welded in all the way across. And then I came down here underneath to tie those together and had a very wedge-shaped uh, opening there. So what I did is I took a bolt, quarter-inch bolt, and laid it in there and welded it in place. And that solidified it up quite well, so that took care of all of that. Now, I'm not sure how much of that length I'm going to need on those things, so I'm leaving it for right now. Uh, maybe that I'll cut it off at some point in time, but now I'm going to get ready to start fitting the dash together. So that's what we're going to be working on next. And, yeah, I'm going to have to get it kind of mocked up in place, and then uh, I'll show you what I need to do. It's cleaned up, and set in place and uh, I think you can barely see got myself a measurement from that point over to the same point on the other side and it's 38 and 5 16 so then I brought my two halves of the dash over here 
and I needed something to keep them in alignment um, because they were loose from each other, so that means they weren't. Well, this section of the bottom of the dash right here is straight all the way across. It has a drop down in the middle, but then it goes back to being straight here. So I've got that clamped to the edge of my workbench to hold it straight. And then I took half of my 36 and 5 sixteenths, I think is what it was, 38 and 5 sixteenths. So I took half of that from this point right here, which is what's going to line up with the uh, mark on my framework there. Pulled it over here, and it came out right here as the, what would be the center of the thing. The problem is, is that line, if I extend it on up here and on down, is going to come in too close to this hole, for one thing. So, I have another problem over here. On this side, if I go from here over, and I don't actually have my mark yet, but it was going to fall just inside of this or this hole right here, which is going to give me two holes right exactly next to each other. So what I'm going to do to solve that problem, instead of cutting it here, I'm going to cut the dash here along this so I can leave myself this hole. And you go, well, that's too wide. Yeah, it is. But I've got a massive gaping jockey box um, right now. And I don't need it that big in that this dash. So I'm going to calculate how much I'm going to be extending it here. And then I'm going to take that much out of the middle of the jockey box to narrow it down. And what that will do is, let's see, I figure out how I can get this where I can show you here. That will put these two pieces right about like that. So I will maintain a slight drop down in the center here, and that'll give me it'll get me off all of these weird curvatures so that I only am dealing with straight line here basically. And I'll be able to get that to fit up. And then I'll so I'm gonna weld this up next, and then that'll tell me how much I've got to take out of the center of the jockey box. And I'll go in and finish that. So basically we'll have cut this thing to three pieces to get what I need to get. So that's where I'm at right at the moment. Um, I've measured this where I wanted it to be. Got myself a square straight up and down line there and I've cut this off. So I don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to be, my next project will be to get myself a straight line here that's square with that edge so that I can put these two pieces together and that's where I'm going next and then I'll have to tack those together and move on to the next piece of the steps here okay so we've got this uh, line laid out here on this side where we're going to make our cut I've got it highlighted with uh, with the sharpie so that if my tape gets torn off or anything that I know exactly where I've got to go. I arrived at that. I've got it clamped down here and this is my straight edge but I realized that I couldn't keep my square relative to it so I used these lines right here. This one and that one to set my square on the, to be able to square that up over there. So that's where I'm at and I will cut that and then we'll be ready to tack it back together. And it'll still be long, but that'll let me know then what I've got to do over here in the middle of the jockey box. So we'll get her cut apart here and get her prepped uh, to tack together and probably get it tacked and come back to that point. All right, so here's my uh, first splice here. So I'm get the middle right. And I've uh, now been able to retain more of this drop down right here. So I've got that. This all looks good. Got myself a good match going up there. So that then, when I measured from my end point out here to my end point over here, left me with two and three quarter inches that I need to take out of there. And so I've got that marked here. 
That's going to be my next step is to cut that out. That's going to narrow my glove box down by quite a bit. And I think it'll actually make it look proportionally better to the whole uh, width of the dash as I get across there. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to cut those chunks out and get that tacked together. And then we'll be back. Got that cut down. If you look at that, that's much more better. Much more better. Yeah, I know good English, right? Uh, or yeah, I blew that word all out of my brain. Uh, yeah, looks better because it's not so wide. But anyway, got it all cut and lined up here, ready to start uh, tacking that together. I think that's going to make us a pretty good looking dashboard. So I'll get her tacked together and welded and be back here to show you the finished product. Alright, so there's my new dash. I think I got the proportions correct. That's the word I was struggling with. Yeah, I do speak it English too. So I think I got the proportions looking a lot better. The jockey box is down small enough now where it doesn't like dominate the whole dash. Um, I still got this spot here, which I think used to be the ashtray. Um, I may fill that. I don't know right now what I'm going to do. It's left me with these two holes, which could be useful for switches or something. Got a switch, a switch, another switch over here, a couple of convenient bullet holes, which will go along with the theme on the car. Uh, but uh, this one actually up here is actually going to get hidden up underneath the dash. But anyway, it looks like I'm where I want it. Now I've got to go test fit it. Then I'll need to come back and fix these spots here before I actually put it in the car. I'd rather work on those on the bench. But I'm going to go test fit it now and see what I've got. See if I actually got it exactly right from this mark over to the other mark on the other side. And we'll see how that plays out. And then I'll figure out how to patch it up and get it fastened in the car. There we go. Got her in. Got her to fit. I like the way that looks in there. Um, yeah, I see a couple minor things with it, but nothing that we can't take care of here. So, yeah. I think that... Uh, Gets us in good shape. Now I'm just going to have to go in and weld it down the sides there. <clears throat> and I'm actually, my green bracket's coming down out of the windshield. I can weld the bottom edge of the dash to them on both sides. So that'll really stiffen all of that up. And then I'm going to tack weld. Eh, probably, I don't know, tack weld, finish weld, whatever, right along the base of what used to be the cowl there and tack weld the dash to it. I think that'll get me where I want to go. But that, uh, yeah, ended up being a pretty good use of those old parts that I just had sitting around. So, I'm happy with the way that's turning out. I get that in there, then we'll probably have to go back to work, you know, filling stuff in, trimming up the top of the windshield to get it where we want it. But for right now, let's just go work on getting that dash fastened in there. Try to fill in now these uh, gaps that we've got here coming off of the, the corner post of the pillar. So what I did, um, if you can see close, there's a rolled edge that I left on there that I've tacked in place. There, maybe you can see that better. And I've just tacked that to the cowl coming down here. Uh, when I got to this point right here, I've got this body line right here. So I cut from there over, I cut that rolled edge off cut up here and then I took my uh, body hammer over here and uh, I just picked this down until it touched all the way down to this point and I actually had to pick it down pretty good and then tack it and then pick the next one and then tack it pick the next one and tack it until I got down into here and I carried that over there and then that left me now with all I have had to do is kind of make myself a little filler panel to go in here so i got that cut and that's really just going to be a straight piece of metal that i've uh, cut it's got a you know the curvature rolled into it that way but that's going to extend me on down to the cowl so i'm just going to tack that in place 
Um, it's not going to fit real good right there at the end, so I'll have to just fill that with my welding wire. And then over here on the back, I'll end up with a little triangle that I'll have to make myself to come fill that little spot in. So that's where we're at. I'm going to get this done on both sides. I've already got this part done. So I'll just get my filler panels welded in there. And we'll be back to show you the end result of that one. It's off for two weeks getting to this part of the finish here, but uh, I got that. Now where I grind those welds off, that's going to smooth that up and look pretty good in there. <clears throat> I was thinking that I was going to have to build some curvature in here. So kind of have it come down into a cup shape, but it's not, didn't need that. It just needed to come straight down. So flat piece of metal with a few tweaks was able to Make that tie together really nicely right there. All right, now we are going to dive into trying to finish off the top of the dash here. I don't think I'm going to worry about filler stuff along in this area. Probably just fill this in with welding rod or wire. It's over on that side where I'm going to have to build myself some an extension to come down there and get up around that corner. So that's one of the things we'll go to next. That uh, patch panel all cut and fit in there now, so I'm going to tack it in place and then we'll just uh, weld ourselves a little triangle shaped one along here. And that should wrap up this side. It's actually coming together easier than I thought it was. I'm happy about that. Well, as I've said, this is the part that I've been dreading on this whole project. Not sure how to go about it, and it has really worked out pretty good. So, got that uh, patched in there. Over on that other side, you can see we have that new panel put in across the top, and then I cut a triangular piece and welded it in across the corner. So, I got some touch up welding to do back there, and I got to finish all my seams and everything. But that uh, piece is in place now, and uh, we're good. So I think I'm going to wrap the video up right here. Um, I still, in the next video, I'll end up uh, getting the dash uh, fitted the rest of the way and put in. And then I've got to figure out what I'm going to do across the top of the windshield. And I, I know I'm going to narrow that down a whole lot. It's too bulky visually right now. So we're going to narrow that down. I just don't know what that's going to look like when I'm done. Um, as with everything else on this, I'm going to ease into it one step at a time and it will come together and I'll be happy with it by the time I'm finished. So we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, thanks for watching Crazy Dad's Garage and uh, hope you'll follow along as we continue on the projects here. There we go. All right. We will talk to you later. Everybody have a fun day.